Well, so this is finally we got we we finally have on this show a former WWE creative member. Okay, um, and what you know we, we you know we bro we review these sh- we've been doing this how long have we been doing this Conan six years six yep. years we've been doing this show you know. Yeah. Oh, let so me we, just say, Road Dog, this is the thing. You've got to you've got to cultivate an audience. That's all you got to do. Yeah. You've got to it ain't gonna happen immediately, but you'll cultivate an audience because you you have a you know you're you're witty, you're informative, you live you you tell good stories, you know you're likable. So you'll be able to, but you got to cultivate an audience. Audience, and you will. Thank you for saying yeah. all that. I appreciate it. So, plus, so you're, we with, were, you're with the Conrad like stable, right? So that that actually yeah, that's a yeah. good jump. Conrad's start. the man, bro. That's a good you're jump with, start. There's yeah. Nobody better than him. Yeah, Let me. So, so he's I've heard. So I've heard stuff like this in the past. But I've, I've never really confirmed <clears> this or stuff. You know, whatever. But so I've talked to other. You, of course, Aaron Blitzstein, mutual friend of ours. Yep. Good, I've, I've sp- spoken to him and stuff. Right now, like you've wor- and I, I, my understanding, the two you worked together and enjoyed working with each other. Yeah, that, yeah, I loved answer. working with Blitzberg. Okay, I called him quick Blitzberg. For the people that know who he is, please, please. I don't know who he is. Who's okay, Aaron so let me just give you a little touch, quick backstory. Aaron Blitzstein worked in marketing at WCW. He's one of the, the marketing director and everything. And he's just, he didn't really know anybody and everything. So me and Russo would like go and sit and talk to him. Like we liked him. We we called him. We always wore the Yank, the New York Yankees yeah, hat. The Yankees and hat. me and Vince always used to refer to him as the Jew with the Yankee hat. And we'd laugh about <laughs> it every time the game. <laughs> like, yeah. And he's a funny guy, right? Yeah, he's so hilarious. When, so when WCW went out of business, he sub- started doing comedy writing and yeah. submitted a, a writing for a comedy contest and wrote an episode of uh Curb your enthusiasm. They got like second place out of like thousands of entries. And, you know, what, the, what they do is when they find creative people, these talent agencies, you sign the guys, we get you writing projects and stuff. And he ended up writing for Letterman, Family Guy and stuff. Family and he guy. finally got the gig. I think his first gig was writing the cartoon for, for yeah. the network. The yeah. uh, what, what was that called again? The, the WWE was cartoon? Camp WWE or something? Camp yes. Very yes. edgy. Yeah. Very adult, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, like yeah, like, really. And I guess Vince then brought him in and started. He started writing on yeah. becoming part of the writing team. Right? He was on. He was on uh, Team Smith's Diz, as I like to call it, SmackDown. SmackDown. Okay. So let me ask you a question. What, like, you know, we we know it's like you know, you guys you write the show and everything, but what type of like, I don't want to call them restrictions, but were there like regulations or things like you had to do? With you know, like I've heard in the past, not not from him, but like you had to have uh, certain minorities on the show for a certain amount of time or something. Like, were there any like guidelines that you guys had to follow? Where like, okay, we have some guidelines here. We have to put these guys on the show. These guys, like the women on the show, or certain. Was there anything you had to follow? So no, no, there were. Look, he stayed a little longer than I did actually, and so I wonder if uh, if if there were for him, I wouldn't know. But for me, and and when he was working with me, we didn't have any written rules. Now, look, I think it's good that you think about okay, how many women do we have on the show? How many African Americans? You know what I mean? I think Hispanics, I, like you know, yeah, yeah exactly. I think that's that, that's the right thing to do, uh, and so we did that if that's what he was talking about. You know what I mean? But there wasn't any written rule about right. about that or anything well, what and about look, the restrictions were all usually in our heads about oh god what's vince gonna think of this you know what i mean and right then, so, so then you had to read so, write it 50 times so everything had to just like you're writing for vince we've heard that you're writing yeah, right you're basically yeah, I mean, writing for the one man audience like you know? anyway yeah so so let me ask you this um when did you guys have like a because you know, me and coney were in our 50s you're how old are you brian 53 53 so we're yep. kind of like we have different you know, when we watch the show, me and Conan would sit to say, "Well, this is not for us. This is obviously for for children." Yeah. How did you guys have dad? Like, like you know, Aaron said that you guys had metrics and stuff like that. Was there like data that you guys had where you were targeting certain demographics and what type of content you would try to like target those demographics with? So, so we did have data analytics uh, meetings all the time, but it's, it's, give an example of what what you guys would discuss. Well, well, I mean, ratings minute by minute, uh, but, but, but also, so it was analytics meeting to gather information, to help us write towards a, uh, uh, you know, set, set of individuals or older, older men or older women. But, you know, we, at the time we didn't have any women on the, on the, uh, writing team on the creative team. And then, so, so what do we know, right? About women, just put them on the show and shut up. And so, uh, then we hired, uh, Dana warrior. And so at least we had a woman's opinion on there that, that helped us out of a couple of, of, uh, binds. But, um, 
Yeah, there were, look, there's not any written regular rules. The, the analytics was to gather information to try to write in that direction. But, I, you know, I, I don't think we ever really utilized that. I think we got the information. It was cool to have. But I don't know that we ever changed our writing style right. one way or the other for it. Who, who are you – who is, like, you a fan of? Like, who are some of your favorite guys to work with? Who, who, are, the, who are the guys that – you had a good rapport with you'd write the material they'd get it like this is good and like yeah. you you, well, you you had good chemistry with you know yeah so it's look it was uh i i had a, a guy who wrote for bray wyatt bray always had a million ideas and this guy had a good idea of what bray's voice was and so he wrote for him so that was easy for me um but me personally like uh, orton um new day you know what i mean like i loved and and i also wasn't dumb enough to put it in in their voice or was it dumb enough to write it and give them something and go here's what we want you to say it was always a collaboration um, yeah, that's a mis- that's a that's a misconception a lot of people have yeah i think it, it they is. think that every character is given a verbatim script but oftentimes you see guys that are they're having trouble creatively with their character yeah and they're yeah. trying to and you know you, you can see them on screen they're thinking about what to say next you can see it you know you can yeah. see in their body language and they're, they're having difficulty with and everything so but but like so other i'll guys- give you a good example of somebody that you just named without naming names but i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you what i think happened and you correct me okay you know like braun Strowman. i'm imagining that whole puppets and all that was his idea oh you mean uh, you mean why you, you mean why yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. i'm sorry yeah, yeah. i'm sorry sorry white 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 and uh, I, when I first saw it, I popped just because it was different, you yeah. know, and I loved it. And I was able to say, okay, this is a supernatural part of the show. I'll disconnect and join it because it's good. Yeah. Then it just totally went off the <laughs> rails. Now, my question is, did were the writers coming up with different <laughs> than his vision? And why didn't Vince just go with his vision because it was kind of working? Or what kind of happened there? Because you had a guy that was mega f- hot and yeah. here's the thing and you know this road dog it's very 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 rare when you get a guy that hot twice with different gimmicks yeah. and f- it up both times go ahead <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know that i can say anything in retort to that i mean I, if you hit the nail on the head and and truth be told i think you'll be back you know what i mean i think we'll see him a third time and and look it did get a little wacky it makes me think and this is right, wrong, or indifferent. I'll probably get some heat for saying this, but um, I just feel like sometimes Vince let the writers do their thing and it's kind of gets successful. And then he feels like he wants to play with it too. You know what I mean? And then, and it kind of goes the way of the, of the, the way the, Vince. Uh, do you think you know, Vince had, and, and, and you just you go think- like, okay, well, how, let's stay with this because we don't want to just say, this sucks. We we want to quit or whatever. So let's try to stay with this. Next thing you know, uh, you're doing some of the crap he was doing later in his in his tenure. You know. Do you think that Vince had a problem being you know being the the arc the the arch- intellectual you know of the, being the emperor that he is and being the guy that the step back sometimes and and not get involved that he had to be involved in everything. Yeah. Yeah. He did. I mean, he did. Once it was, once it gets good and starts getting good. Well, look, he's involved in anything anyway. Like they, he just was, and that was SmackDown and raw and every, every show had to write uh, and go through him before you got it approved yeah, and I, tweak. And you know what I mean? So I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, bro, I don't know how many times road Doug, I would call, you know, Ray Mysterio. Yeah. And he'd say, Hey, can you help me with my verbiage? Or what do you think of this idea or whatever? Yeah. And then I'd go, okay, well, I think you should do this, this, and this. And then he'd call me back and go, oh, they're not doing it. Or it's completely changed. Yeah. The day of. I was oh, like, yeah. So we, I remember times, and, and look, I don't think this is inside baseball. I think everybody kind of knows it. I remember times where we were writing the second and third hour of Raw, and the first hour was on the air. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I it, it, It's crazy. But That's very hard to write like that, dude. Oh, it's, it's – well, I – Look, I would say it's impossible if we didn't yeah. do it every right. Monday, and you know but what I mean. But it's pretty close too. Oh yeah, it's very, well. It's look, it is impossible if you want it to be good and coherent. Right, right. That's that's all that's, that's, that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It One Hundred. My co-host Disco Inferno. Unfortunately, well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, and some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. 
Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it 100. Boom!